Well, hello there and good evening ladies and gentlemen. Today I want to show you a grasshopper function that will be able to have a certain effect on uh, two B-reps that are mixed together and can be manipulated in any way. So, by starting we will draw a rectangle uh, that will you will be used as like a base that we can manipulate later in order to change the position of it. We will extrude it, make sure it's a solid, and just to make it a little bit more interesting, we will also copy it to a different position here. And you didn't know they are like not intersecting right now, so we will make them basically one thing with Boolean union, and now we have one nice B rep. This B rep we will get into Grasshopper with Geometry, and then you click right click Geometry, set one geometry, and we have this thing. Now you see it looks kind of weird, so we just hide the one we have here in Rhino and we just use the one we have in Grasshopper. Now, from this point on, we will want to make um, we want to make random points who are between this and that point, use the points in between those things, so the points out of it will go away. And from the points we have in the inside, we will make a function that will be used or that has a correlation between a certain point in space and that moves accordingly to it. So. Um, now we have our geometry and we will make the box that's surrounding it. So this is a so-called bounding box. And the content of it is, is this thing and we just put it right into here. And now it will give us some, a few things uh, like the, how the outcome is. And um, to be honest, I'm not sure which exactly one of those to use, but I always use the top one and it kind of worked out for me. And also you can change this parameter here in order to um, have it as of like several objects or one objects, then it doesn't matter basically. Anyway, um, we will now populate this area with just a random number of points. And the problem with this um, popular 3D thing is that we only can use rectangles or cubes that we can populate and um, we will now use just like select the points we are inside of this area so we don't want the points outside of it and in the order to do that, we use the geometry of the beginning, this one here, put it in here, whoop, put it in here, and use the points we want to extract from it. Now the problem is now that it just gives us like a uh, outcome of trues and falses. It's always good to use the panel in order to see it. A false true, false true. This tells us if the Thing is inside or outside true or false true or false we can use this thing now to make basically a, a division of lists up and in here and use the list of the random points you want to have and make the pattern that we just uh, created with this command here now what we want to do we just Click all of these, middle mouse click, and this do it with the blindfold. And now we have uh, those two things. Now we have to, uh, in order to see them separately, use the list um, that will be separated on it. So basically here you see, those are just our two boxes here. And here you see, this was the outside area, this is the inside area. Um, in order to make it a little bit more uh, parametric, so to say, uh, we are going to use a number slider and put in the amount of points you want to have in the random seed generator. Um, amount of, so 
So here we have that and put this into counts. So of course it's zero, there will be nothing. But oh, we have to put it at, well, let's say 300 for the Spartans. So now we have it here with a nice and more boxy shapey looking amount of points. And um, now that we have the points, well, I'll just keep it here just in order that we can take a look at the points later. We want to make a correlation between this point here and this point here. This, the other point here, this point there, this point here, this point there, this point here, this point there, and so on. Like every point has to be somewhere connected to it. And in order to that, uh, there are two commands that are very useful, in my opinion. That is, the one is a vector, two points. So it tells us the, um, the distance and the vector between the points. And we also have to um, set the point that we want to use between those. So basically, every one of those just green of those green points is making a vector between that point. So there is a command that calls like vector uh, display. Then we use the vector and uh, the the anchor of the point and the vector you want to display. And obviously, I put in the wrong things. So here. And um, now we have the correlation between all those points. I mean, this is not so interesting yet, but we can uh, use it in order to progress further. So now that we have our vectors that are like uh, connected to the attractor point that we want to use later and maybe change the position of, um, we can make a plane that is on each of those points so like it will be constructed on the on each of those points by construct plane and the beginning point would be the random point mass basically and the axis would be uh, either way y or x, it doesn't matter. And so now we have an attraction to the point. Now we cannot do much with it, and it's, there's nothing to like bake into grass or uh, rhino or something. But um, basically, what we are seeing here is that each of those individual points now have a direction into x y and z directions. So each of those points has their own coordinates. And this thing we can use very well uh, in order to, for example, construct a small rectangle on it or a circle or something that you want to construct on it by, for example, using uh, just a simple I would do like you know, just take this one. No, no, I take a different one. Sometimes I get lost myself on which of those things to use. So it's always a good idea to have the display thing on with draw icons and draw full names in order to actually maybe have a reference, like a visual reference of what you can do. Anyway, here you have it. And for example, this uh, thing wants will create a box that needs a plane base, like a plane like opa, a plane like like this here. Yeah, it's just it's just like on the flat plane right now. And you see this will be like basically used on each of the single planes we've just created by having the vector of the having the vector of our initial point to the points we created by the random cloud. So what I would just do now, actually I will use a few number sliders and just to control the X, Y, and Z, 
um, direction. As you see, you can head more like this way or that. And now we use this one. Let's make it a little bit more like flat or something. We use this one in order to put rectangles in every single one of those boxes. So now I will unpreview this one. And if I will change the location of my points, you will see there will be a correlation to the points in space, to the other points. And if you look at the frontal view or the right view, it will always be, always be like centered on the point we have. And if I'm in the situation where I want to change the rectangles that I have, I can always show the rectangles again. And if I want to have a bigger volume, obviously the points will be there again. Let me hide it again. And we have always an attraction to the point, the attractor point that we have here, that we want. And of course, um, if I want to have up the density a little bit bigger, I can put it on 500, for example, or even more. And yeah, have a more dense situation here. Okay, so this little script, you can also, for example, um, if you don't like the boxes here in the end, you can also put some polygons, some, for example, here we could use, um, we could use, uh, if I want to say, okay, you know what, I want to have a, um, an octagon, so you just like say, or like hexagon, for example, then use the same thing, a uh, polygon, and you put in the polygon thing and you see it creates new different polygons in order for me to have um, now different uh, like a different amount of them or a different size um, I can do that and I can just extrude um, the I can extrude the polygon into a certain direction, but the problem is now, for example, we want to have the direction of the Z plane, for example, the direction it's heading to. So now we need to deconstruct uh, the plane and just reuse this Z axis here. And um, now, for example, if it's like uh, all basically one in the direction, so it's not uh, that far away. Uh, but we can also multiply it by a certain number in order to have it um, bigger, for example, here. So if we want to have it bigger, I just like put a big number in there. Oh, this looks crazy. And maybe something small, like I just leave it on one to be honest. In order for it to have it kept, um, we just put this this uh, command in here and just leave the other ones alone. And it just like with like disable it in order to have a smoother experience here. And yeah, and now if we really want, if you're happy with the results and we can just right click it, bake it, use the default layer or the layer you want to use. And then we have a very nice amount of random, well, more or less random because we have the tractor points, but more or less random amount of polygons flying in space. But I just think I lost it rectangle there and for example if you want to make a nice view out of it just like a line 
um, line area or line drawing you can always just draw it make 2d and then if you look at the top view you always have a very nice clean drawing of polygons in this amount I think yeah it was hexagons yeah so nice so I will put the the small script in the description and have a nice evening and I hope the small more or less educational uh, video helped you have a good day